All right, let's get started making this game look a little bit prettier. Now, there's lots of places that you can go to get these assets. Now, one of the top places that I like to go is to kenny.nl. So there is, um, you could download any one of these. I just did a quick search um, for platform and you'll see that there's a bunch of stuff that you can get that comes in as tile maps. So a tile map is um, a bunch of tiles that are put that are laid out on a single PNG image with transparent backgrounds where it needs it. There's also platform characters that you can download. And again, you can see something similar where each of the frames are laid out in a, in a single image um, and you're able to choose the ones that you want for any of the particular frames inside of Godot. Um, but what we're going to do is I'm just going to, instead of doing that, I'm going to show you how to do that using the program called Piskel. So Piskel, spelled P-I-S-K-E-L, is an online um, or downloadable editor to create sprites. I'm going to use the desktop version, but feel free to use the online version if you wish. Um, either one will work and they work almost exactly the same way. So this is Piskel, this is the desktop version. Um, it's not too difficult to work your way around. Um, you can save as a default, um, as a Piskel file so that you can come back inside of this editor and work with it as much as you like. I'm just gonna um, create a basic tile map um, using Piskel and I'll show you how to, uh, to do that. The default size, by the way, for all of these tiles is 64 by 64. You can set the default size to something else if you prefer it different, but 64 by 64 is a pretty good balance between clarity and, um, and size. So the tools are really simple. You can see them across the left hand side here. There's also palettes and colors here. So anytime you've chosen a palette, a color and used it, um, it'll appear in your palette on the right hand side. Or you can add um, specifics from a particular color palette that you might want to load. So I won't bore you with uh, me doing some drawing. So I've just speeded this one up. But you can see the important thing is I'm just using the basic tools to uh, and the colors to make each of the frames. And all you do is you click add new frame. You can add a blank frame or you can duplicate the last frame if you prefer. One of the key things is it'll expect this to be an animation. So you can actually turn down the animation speed on the top right hand side of your screen so that you don't have it flickering through the animations um, as if it was an animated sprite. If you're doing a tile map like this, you don't need that. And you don't need the onion skinning as well. We'll show that later when we do a different one. And don't forget your control Z is your undo. You can always get rid of any of your changes and you'll notice that all the palette, all the colors, the previously used colors are in the bottom uh, right hand side um, of your screen. So you can come back to them. All right, so let's imagine that you have a bunch of frames that you want to export into your Godot project. So I just drew these uh, real quick. Um, they're not very good, but we'll go with it anyway. And um, there's a lot more tools that you can use within uh, Piskel. And if you spend a bit more time, you can get some really good results. Now, the important thing about exporting is um, I've saved this as a tile map, um, as a Piskel, so I can come back to it. But when you export, you export it in much of in, in lots of different formats. So this export button that looks like a little picture icon down here allows us to export in a bunch of different ways. Um, the best way that you want to do um, for Godot or one of the ways that you can do for Godot is this PNG and um, then you can say uh, as a sprite sheet with layout options. So this is currently three columns and three rows because I've got this, um, I've got seven um, actual sprites that I'm going to export. So you can see it says here it's uh, 192 by 192 because everyone is 64 by 64 resolution. So if you click this download, this gives you the actual sprite sheet. If you prefer a different way, if you prefer to do it individual sprites, you can do this as a zip file and it will take every frame and put it out as an individual 64 by 64 bit PNG image inside that zip file that you can you can export. But this PNG image is how I'm going to do it and it's how I want you guys to do it too. So make sure you've drawn your sprites and then you can have a go at exporting them. Um, they don't have to be like mine, they can be any way you like. We'll just download this and then we'll put this into Godot. So I've clicked download. I'm just going to put it into um, uh, 
into my Godot projects um, folder right now. Um, I should really put it straight into the project, but I'll just leave it as tilemap.png. In fact, I'll put it on my desktop to make it easy. So tilemap.png, I'm exporting this as, and then we'll take a quick look at it. So this is tilemap.png. You can see it puts them all together without any gaps between them. And that's perfectly fine because we'll be able to bring that straight into Godot. And we'll just do that one now. So a bunch of different ways to bring this into Godot. As I meant, as you mentioned before, this is effectively just a folder, this res. And yeah, you can open this folder in the file explorer and you can see that the same structure is in place for the the structure down here, all the different folders that are in it, as you see inside the file explorer. So this tilemap.png that I made, I could just drop it straight in. Um, I'm going to maybe um, create a folder um, inside of this. So you can do it any way you like. Um, I'm going to click create new folder inside of the Godot um, editor. So I'm going to do it this way. And I'm just going to call this sprites to keep things organized. The sprites folder, if I click on it right now, highlighting it, I can drag and drop this in to my Godot, straight into my Godot project. So I can have this open in the file explorer or just mine's is on the desktop. And because I had sprites highlighted, it'll import it straight into that folder. As I mentioned before, this is literally um this is literally just a folder inside of the file. Um, inside of your file system. So here's the sprites folder and here's tilemap.png. Um, that's uh, as simple as you could have just dragged it and dropped it straight in from a file, file manager or copied pasted it into this folder and it would work exactly the same. So now that I have this in, let's just adjust this tile map. In fact, what I might do is uh, rather than adjust it, I might actually delete it and we'll start from scratch. So if I delete the entire tile map node, all that data that we had in there has been lost. You can see it's all gone, but it's not difficult to make again. So I'm going to add that tile map node in and um, then we're going to set those values correctly right from the beginning. So the size of my um, files or the size of the um, individual images were 64. Um, this uh, tile set, again, we just set as a new tile set and then we click on the tile set and we get the tile set editor. Again, um, we need to set the tile size to the same size as we've just made. So the default size for us um, from Piscal was 64 by 64. I'm going to make sure I set up my physics layer as well while I'm here. So again, just click on that um, plus to set up the physics layer and leave these as default collision mask and collision layer. I'm going to explain those later or you could look this up inside of the dock that you can find here. Um, the tile map that we have in here now, because we're in our tile set editor, we can drag and drop it into this area here. And uh, we're going to just say automatically to generate these. It's smart enough to know that there are these tiles that it's already got itself set up for. Um, and in theory, now we can actually just um, go to the tile map um, in here and we should be able to select them and start drawing them in. Now, if we do run this, it's probably not got collisions. Sometimes this works and sometimes it doesn't, but you can see it's not quite got the collision yet. So we'll go straight back into the tile map um, go into the tile set and then set up the collision that we want for every single one of the tiles. Um, it seems a bit of a pain in, in the butt, but um, it actually does do, um, it does make things a lot more sensible um, because you can change the collision shape based on what you want and it's not difficult to do. So I've just gone to the individual tile that I want. I'll go down to the physics, um, the physics layer and uh, we can um, as I mentioned the last time, we can just hit the F key to just do a default size for all of them. And for most, it's literally just the case of clicking F on every single one because they're going to be full size. Um, the only one that's a bit different is this one. So I could click F if I wanted to, and then I could just adjust these so that it matches. And all it is is just dragging these points up so that it approximates the shape that um, of the uh, sprite in the background. So. The tile map should be set up now if we just quickly test it and uh, it drops down to the ground. This is um, working exactly as it was before. We've got our tile map set up and um, our portal is still in the same location. So we're able to um, load back into that game. That was a pretty easy way to set up the tile map. And uh, hopefully that will help you to import that from Piscal so that you can create your own. Spend a little time now um, trying to create a good fun level 
um, for your uh, for your game. Uh, just spend some time. You can adjust and create more as many tile maps as you want. And uh, these are just the background. It's going to be the visual so that you can see the level that you want. Um, and then you can just test that out as much as you like. Remember that right now we have no checkpoints. So um, this will be one level. And when you fall off and go beyond a certain height, that will be the respawn. But um, hopefully uh, we'll be able to make a pretty cool level. Um, in the next video, we're just going to quickly replace using Piscal. We're going to replace the player and we're going to add some animations to that. So we have an animated sprite instead of uh, a static sprite.